your wok is, wow, these are two very different colored eggs. Now this dish we actually serve at one of my restaurants, it's called the number 60 fried rice. Doing this dish because one, it's, it's just important to know how to make a fried rice, and two, the dish is pretty easy to make. We're using a lot of ingredients that you can find at your local neighborhood supermarket. A couple harder to find ingredients, usually found in the Asian aisles at, at your local grocery store. Hey guys, my name is Eric Silverstein. I'm the owner of The Peach Tortilla and Bar Peach in Austin, Texas. And today we're gonna to be making a fried rice. So we're just gonna kinda of run through the ingredients we're using today. We're gonna to be using ginger and garlic, which are aromatics that start off the dish. Some green onions, shiitake mushrooms, a little bit of cilantro and red onion. Those are gonna be used as our garnish for the dish. An egg, some day old rice. We're using a jasmine rice today. It is a medium grain rice. You're fine to use a short grain rice if you'd like. We've got some Chinese lap chong. We have some oyster sauce, a little bit of white pepper, miso. This is a white miso, some butter. We're gonna start with our aromatics. Ginger and garlic really form the base of a lot of our stir fries now. So we're gonna start with the ginger and we got a pretty big piece. I'm not gonna use all of it. So I'm just gonna cut it kind of in half and I'm gonna set some of it aside. And we don't want to use any of this skin. So initially you want to take the skin off. I mean, you can use a vegetable peeler. I like to use just the back of a spoon. You can easily just start to take this skin right off. And the beautiful thing about a spoon is it'll get into all these nice little nooks and crannies very easily. And then we're going to go ahead and use a microplane to just get it nice and minced. And I'm not looking for a whole lot for this recipe. I'm just looking for about a teaspoon and a half. So I've got a bulb of garlic. I'm just gonna take a couple cloves out. I learned how to mince garlic from my mom when I was like 11 years old. And so the way I've always been taught is you just use the back of a knife and crush the garlic just a little bit so that we can easily peel it. And so the way I like to mince garlic is I've got the clove right here and I'm just gonna start cutting vertically uh, in really thin strips. Once we have these nice thin strips, I'm just gonna go ahead and mince. As you can see, I'm holding one edge keep my knife stabilized. So I'm gonna work my knife back and forth until I got it nice and minced. All right, so we have our garlic. I'm just gonna lay this in the bowl right here. All right, so now that we have our aromatics out of the way, we're gonna start working on some of our produce here. We're starting with our green onions. What's really important about cutting green onions is you wanna have a really sharp knife. I mean, otherwise it's pretty hard to get a nice thin cut on the green onion. And I'm just gonna start at the top and work my way down. Now we're gonna try and use some of the whites and the butts for the actual stir fry portion of the fried rice. And then the greens we're gonna use as a garnish. And honestly, I see some people throwing away the green onions when it gets down to here. I mean, I like to pretty much go down almost to the root. I'm gonna put them in the same bowl, but I'm gonna have them loosely separate these two. Okay, so we got our green onions ready to go. Next up, we have a red onion. For The red onion is just gonna be a garnish for this dish. Now, at my restaurant, we're using a peach pickled red onion. You know, we like to, to pay some homage to some of the Southern flavors we work with. So we, we pickle them in a little bit of vinegar and peach tea, um, but we're just gonna go raw. When we're gonna go raw with this is just to make sure that we cut this onion pretty thin. Otherwise, it just might be a little bit too oniony. As you can see, we cut the onion vertically and we're just gonna slice thinly. This is just the garnish. You know, if we cut these onion strips really thick, it's gonna overpower the overall bite of the dish. And so that's why we, we really wanna get these things nice and thin. And it's also not gonna be so oniony when you bite into it. Next thing we're gonna be working on is our cilantro. There's nothing crazy. We're not even gonna chop this. So what we're looking for is just some nice whole leaves that present well. If some of the stem stays on, it's not a big deal. It's totally fine. And this will just be a nice color contrast to the red onions. And also, you know, cilantro has great flavor as a garnish as well. Now we're gonna work on some shiitakes. The shiitakes are gonna be part of the stir fry portion of the dish. The way I like to do these shiitakes is this, we gotta remove the stem and they come off really easily if you just twist them. Uh, you know, don't, don't try and cut around the stem, you know, with your knife, there's no need for that. Um, they come off really easily with your hand. And we're probably gonna use, I don't know, I'd say about eight or nine of these for today's dish. Put two on top of one another and I'm just gonna go vertical on them. Just gonna slice them nice and thin. And again, we're looking for a nice thin cut. I'm really big on thin cuts at my restaurant. My cooks will tell you that. Um, I just think nice tight cuts present better. So we've got our shiitake mushrooms 
all sliced up. Now we're gonna move on to the, a lapchang, which is a Chinese sausage, and it's a pork-based sausage. Now, it is a little bit harder to find, um, so if you cannot find lapchang, don't sweat. Um, I recommend substituting with bacon. Bacon works great, but we're gonna use lapchang because it does give you a little bit of that umami factor, a little bit of that sweetness. Now you can see I'm just cutting it on a bias. Why am I cutting it on a bias? I just like how it looks. Creates a touch more surface area, so caramelizes a little bit more in the wok. So you see, we, we want relatively thin spheres. We don't want them too big, or they're gonna take a little bit longer to cook in the wok. And that's gonna be our lap chung. The next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna just beat some eggs. You could drop the egg directly into the wok and scramble it in the wok. There's nothing wrong with that. I just think this gives us a little bit more, I guess, control over the egg. And what I mean by that is your your wok is, wow, these are two very different colored eggs. Um, we're cooking on super high heat. And so we don't really have a lot of time to go in and scramble eggs on the fly. I mean, we wanna beat our eggs now and that way we can kind of focus on cooking the eggs right. And you'll see what I'm talking about once I drop the eggs into the wok. And last but not least, we have our rice. Now you're probably asking, well, why are we using a day old rice? And so what we're trying to do is take some of the moisture out of that rice. And that's really so that it stir fries better in the wok uh, and gives us that texture. So it's not so, it's not, it's not a sticky fried rice. And one last thing, um, I, I personally uh, like to cook my rice in a rice cooker. I just think it comes out as a better, more even product. And I think what you'll find is if you have a rice cooker, a really good rice cooker, you're gonna end up cooking a lot more rice because it's so easy to do it in a rice cooker. Uh, for a medium grain rice, like a jasmine rice, I'm using a one-to-one -one ratio. I, I know that other people have these ridiculous methods like a knuckle method or whatever. I, I, I measure my water. I, I think it, it makes an important difference when you're cooking something like rice. Today, we're gonna to be using a carbon steel wok. Look, if you don't have a wok, it's not the end of the world. I like to use a wok for a couple of reasons. One, with a carbon steel wok, we know we're gonna get some pretty high heat. The other reason I like to use a wok is because of the quantity of food I can cook in the wok itself. But I, I will say that with a caveat, you don't wanna crowd your wok. You crowd your wok, then you end up steaming your food. And if you're cooking at home, you don't wanna do that. All right, let's get to cooking. I'm gonna start with a little bit of oil. If you wanna use canola oil, that's totally cool. If you wanna use grapeseed oil, anything with a higher smoke point is fine. I would not cook with olive oil. What I'm really trying to do is just kind of get it all around the wok. And I'm gonna wait for it to get pretty hot. Now, as you can see, my heat is on about medium high high. I mean, I'm gonna turn it up higher when we do the actual rice, but for the egg portion, uh, I've got it on about a medium high high. All right, so my wok's smoking. And as you can see, I'm not really trying to scramble these eggs. I'm almost kind of make, making an egg omelet. Now, why are we doing the eggs first? If you cook the eggs in the same pan with everything else, you can do it. You just kind of have to separate it from the rest of your ingredients. If the scrambled egg mixes in with your other ingredients, it's gonna coat those veggies and proteins and kind of make them soggy. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the heat, slide this egg right off. And now we're gonna be cooking with high heat. I've got my burner pretty much up on high. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil into the pan. We're gonna move pretty fast and we're gonna start with the aromatics. We're gonna start with a little bit of ginger and a little bit of garlic. We're gonna go right in with the shiitake mushrooms and some of our green onions. And remember, I'm trying to use the butt portions of the green onion. I'm, I'm also gonna go ahead and add some lap chong in, into the pan as well. And and we're using a wok spatula for this dish. Um, I like it because it's easier to plate. It's easier to move all the ingredients around in the pan. Got the ingredients pretty well stir fried. I'm gonna go ahead and add my rice now. And at this point, I'm gonna start adding all my seasonings. So that was my butter. I'm gonna add a little bit of white pepper, probably about two aggressive pinches, some of our miso and then our oyster sauce. The oyster sauce that we're using uh, is really derived from oyster extract. So I wanna look for uh, a brand that uses oyster extract as the first ingredient. It does provide a little bit of umami uh, to the dish. Same deal with the miso. Miso just carries a lot of natural umami in the dish. Now we're gonna go ahead and add the scrambled eggs back into the pan. I'm gonna hit the eggs with just a little bit of white pepper just to season that as well. As you can see right now, I'm just breaking up that egg into the pan now and incorporating that into the fried rice. And at this point, our fried rice is pretty much done. All right, so we finished our fried rice in our wok. 
and now it's time to plate it up. So I'm gonna do about half of what we have right now. Now we're just gonna garnish with some of our green onions. Remember we had those green onion tops? We're gonna garnish with some of those red onions. I like to kind of go down the center of the plate and then we're gonna go with our cilantro leaves. Kind of overlapping some of the red onions, but I still want those red onions to show through. And that is your fried rice. All right, let's see how this tastes. Really nice fried rice. Really good textures and flavor from that wok heat. We got some of that lop chong. I got some of that cilantro in the bite. Red onions really brightens up the end of that uh, flavor profile when you're eating the fried rice. But overall, pretty easy dish to make um, on a weeknight at home. You know, most of these ingredients you can get at your local grocery store. Thanks for watching me cook my favorite fried rice today. Um, I'm Eric Silverstein with the Peace Tortilla in Austin, Texas. Uh, we'll see you next time.